He did, right. He <coughs> looked good shaven. <coughs> they were away almost three weeks, almost a month. They went to Australia, then they went to... You went to Australia? No, where did you go? Just the Philippines. Philippines. South, down to Tanglebang area. You heard that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we just miss each other. It was a wonderful trip and we learned a lot. And Lelia sends her love. She just uh, texted me and, uh, and uh, she just sends her up there. But she misses everybody. She'll see on standby on oh, Wednesday. They have only five seats. Uh, so keep, keep your prayer. And yeah, 50 seats. And, and on Friday and Saturday, I think it's a little more open. But we're believing for Wednesday. Amen. Amen. Brandy, we're still praying for you, sister. Woo! What baby watch? Thank you. Jesus. Okay. And take a look. Take a look at Ben. The bug is handsome, man. He's all faded out. Look at him. He's ready for baby coming. So when baby comes out, he can be slick, man. Hey. That's what we're really excited to do that. So Ed, we're praying for you also. Ed fell down a, a, a week ago and um, he scraped himself to get some strawberry fields for whatever. Tyler just dislocated his, his ankle playing basketball. And uh, talk about, guys have to pray for our family, amen? amen? Really pray for our family because spiritual attack sometimes sucks. Anybody really do that? Our dog of 18 years passed away. Our, uh, you know, that uh, our car died and had to get another one. Then our, our refrigerator broke, we saw we had to get that one. Then our, and then our sink backed up, uh, our plumbing backed up on Sunday. So we're a wonderful time taking all that stinky, gooky stuff away from that. So with all of that in mind, we pray for us as we pray for you, amen? Because the devil isn't happy with us because we're doing something about it, amen? And he'll do something and try to... Uh, Divide and separate our relationships, especially in our families, with our children, with our spouses, um, even with our church. So we have to be really be careful of that. It's be cognizant and be, pay attention. God says, be aware or beware. Because Satan comes as a roaring lion looking for those he can devour. In other words, if you take your eyes off of Jesus, you place it on your problems, he'll just bite your coat off. So we have to be very, very careful with that. So let's pray first before I share the Word of God. Father, we just thank you that we can sit in your presence and share the Word of God. Your words, not my words, Father. We just thank you that the words will break any stronghold, any kind of things that needs a breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ, would you break those chains? We love you so much, Lord. And we have to just come to the basic fundamentals of love. This is why you came. And this is why our lives will make a difference because of love. So we thank you and we worship you all of our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this is Love Month, right? Valentine's. Woo! Have I told you lately, hon, I love you. Yeah. Sometimes those words are not frequent in the homes, especially with spouses or with your children, because we're so busy being busy. And then uh, we blame life. But we need to sometimes we need to downship. Ah, yeah, cool our jets and really start to look at the things that are important to us. There are several ways we can express a love for one, uh, for one another, but I think there are basically really two ways. Okay, it's called show and tell. There's a popular saying that tells someone that to love them and if necessary use words. Sounds good, but not absolutely true. In my opinion, okay, it would be a great idea not only to say I love you, but to show people that you love them and you respect them and value them. Amen? Pay attention over here. Okay. Look at okay, good. Many think that um, providing for the needs of their family is good enough. Some of you, I remember I, I was talking to somebody and I was trying to counsel them and, you know, um, they don't have a good love language. And she said, the wife said to the husband, you never say I love you. He said, I told you last week. <laughs> see a problem there, right? So, so, you have to tell people you love them constantly. True love should be expressed in a way okay, to those genuinely that you love them. True love should be expressed in a way, an intimate way. Just not falling off your lips, but sometimes, remember, 
I remember Raymond, you know, she was, she needed to get my attention. I was really doing God things. And she had four years old, she had to grab my ears and, and look at me and say, look into my eyes, Daddy. And suddenly God will grab your ears and say, can you look into my eyes? Keith! Look into my eyes. Isn't that true? God needs our attention, our full attention, and not be distracted by the world. Have I told you lately, Lord? God constantly says that to us. The Bible tells us that words and deeds, that's where faith is. That even applies to the love, your love as well. Words and deeds. There are several ways uh, people will give and receive love. We don't receive it or give it, okay, uh, in just one way. There's several different ways. It's just like chicken. Chicken is chicken, but it's how you prepare chicken, right? Teriyaki chicken, adobo chicken, roast chicken, hula hula, whatever it is. It's how you present it. Everybody likes it in a different way, but still the same. Love is that way too. Love is love. But the way that you prepare it and present it is people will okay, like teriyaki love, they like adobo love, and all that kind of stuff. But love is really love. That's really important that we understand that. The five love languages. Guys, it's hard to read this, but you got to read this. Some of you, uh, it's by uh, Gary Chapman. It's a classic of the relationships. He addresses this about giving and receiving. Through his more than 30 years of counseling, okay, he noticed specific common ways partners communicate love, and which I believe applies to your families, applies to each other. In all of your personal relationships, Remember these five. Number one, words of affirmation. Not condemnation, affirmation. Amen? Saying, I love you. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I appreciate you. Thank you. You're the best, honey. You're the best. These are compliments that fill the hearts, and they need to hear them often. Not once a week, not once a year, every day. Encouraging words are therapeutic, aren't they? It shows that you recognize, you care, and you value people. On the other hand, complaining and grumbling and cursing and criticizing cuts deep wounds in their hearts. It's not easily forgiven. Anybody been wounded by words? Sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but words cut deeper in my heart. Today, just look at somebody and just say, I love you. Amen? Quality time. Quality over quantity. That's really important. You can spend a lot of time with somebody, but still not have quality time. Amen? You're just there, and you're a lump on a log, uh, and there's no communication. It's giving the person, okay, your undivided attention. Undivided, that's the key word. Undivided attention. It's not only hearing, but intentionally listening to somebody. When you listen to somebody, it shows that they are important. What they share is really important. Okay? Is in this instance, time is spelt L-O-V-E. Spending time. Distractions, cancel dates, not showing up, can be especially harmful and hurtful to this person. It shows that you don't have priority in my life. I'm doing something else that's more important than you. Receiving gifts. Gift giving doesn't have to be expensive, but it has to be given from a genuine heart with love. You cannot buy love. Can you hear an amen? amen? Gifts of love can be physical reminders of how much you love people. Every time they look at it, or they read it, or they use it, reminds them of how much you love them because you care. Little gifts. Rima gave me a for Christmas present. Okay? She gave me okay, peanut brittle. And every time I bite that peanut butter, mm, I think about her. Okay? Same thing with, uh, with our, our kids. You know, they give me certain things. Okay? Uh, Tyler was, was injured, and you know what? Just to say that I, I loved him, I made him breakfast, I took him upstairs, and I served him. And he really appreciated that because he was humbling. When it, going upstairs, forget it, man. Tell you what, we needed a slide. But praise God, we prayed for him, now he's working. Okay? 
It's after just before, just not even a week. Acts of service. Here it is. For these people speak, okay, action speaks louder than words. Taking the initiative to help without being asked is huge in their hearts. How many of you, okay, if your children just do things without being asked, it blesses you. You don't have to know, hey, can you watch the dishes? Can you do this? No, 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 no. Can't do it. Why? It's because an expression of their love for you. It demonstrates that they really care and they appreciate your hard work and want to help without being asked. It's just like in church. When people come and just move chairs or they do this, whatever it is. Okay? I appreciate that. That's one of my, my love languages. Okay? Acts of service. Okay? When people come early and they come and say, how can I help? I tell you what, it just pleases me. Okay? Some uh, small things done with great love is a huge difference in someone's love, in someone's heart. Physical touch, not groping. Okay, physical touch. In a marriage, a simple like hugging. How many of you love to hug? My wife loves hugging. She's, if you know Lilia, she's a hugger. Amen. Amen. She'll hug the ugly out of you all the time. I miss that. Okay. How about just holding hands? My wife and I hold hands like, like high school kids. And everybody think, oh, you're still dating. Yeah, 35 years of dating. Okay? Some of, some of you, if I'm sitting next to you, you watch her. She always put her leg on my lap. She sits on the oh. road. <laughs> Physical touch is really, really important. Okay? But it has to be appropriate. Appropriate. Here it is. Any instance of physical, physical abuse should not be tolerated in any any marriage or any any family anywhere. It has no place in relationships. If I hear some of anybody being abused, you will get my attention and you will get the attention of others. Amen? Amen? There is no room for physical abuse anywhere. Okay? You better walk away. You better walk away. If your intention. Okay? With these principles in mind, I want to share what true love should be according to God's word. Okay? True love is number one. True love is always real. Romans 12, 9 and 10 says, Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tight to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. What a great, great scripture, right? We should, we should etch that in our hearts all the time. Remember we're saying, okay, when you see somebody, see a sign on them saying, encourage me today. I've made it a goal, it, a habit of mine, if you ask my kids, okay? I try to say something nice to at least one person. Like, I like you here, or, yeah, you know, it's not this fabulous stuff. It's something really genuine, okay? And it's really important. When I look at somebody, it says, let me encourage you. Let me pray for you, as I did, did with Brian. You know, he said he had a rough night last night because of muscle spasm. He says, great. It wasn't good, but God is still good. So we pray. And that's really important. When God, okay, when God urges you to pray, do it right away. Let me repeat that. When God urges you to pray, pray right away. And that's really important. Why? Because there's windows of opportunity that God wants to partner with you to bless somebody Miracles happen when you pray. Let me repeat that. Miracles happen when you pray and when you least expect it. God says that His mercies are new every morning. It is the same with our love. His love is new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Even when we're unfaithful, God is always faithful. He always will supply us a fresh new supply of love each morning. God loves is the most important for, force in the universe. His love. Bible says God is love. It doesn't say God has love. When you take a look at God, you know, there's something. Remember when they, I remember when I look at Billy Graham, you know, one of my heroes. I look at him and just, you know, he just exudes the love of Christ. He says it's nothing about the love of Christ. On his tombstone, you will see his last words was the preacher. What did he preach? The love of Jesus Christ. Everywhere. We should have that 
confidence in ourselves every single day. In the, even in your worst day, you're smiling. Why? Because, you know, Jesus loves you and you're headed heavenward. No matter what happens in my life, and there's a lot of things that happen in my life, okay, I'm assured, I'm confident that Jesus loves me. This I know because the Bible says so. And because I will see mom and dad, I will see my brothers, I'll see those that I love, okay, in heaven again. They are not lost. I know exactly where they are. So when my last breath is here, my first breath will be with the ones that I love who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. This is why it is so imperative, brothers and sisters, to invite those that know, know Jesus into our churches so that they can hear the gospel, the good news, that they too can be in heaven. And that's why we're saved. Not to sit around and do nothing. We are here. We are God's voices, His heart, and His arms, and His beautiful feet. To bring the gospel to people that we love. Just think about it. Think about some of the people that you really love that hasn't accepted Jesus Christ in their life. Why not share Jesus with them so they'll be with you forever? Amen? So that's really important because God says, Hey, this is what? Love encourages, love strengthens, love energizes, love empowers, love forgives, and love heals. God's perfect love casts out all fear. I don't fear anything. I don't fear whatever the situation is. Why? It's because God is living inside of me. And I'm convinced that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Nothing. If I should die today, I'm promoted in the, in, in, in the heavenlies. Then that's really important. Love is the driving force that transforms lives and makes the impossible possible. Sometimes you look at a situation, go, Ugh. you look at your husband, Ugh. you look at your wife, Ugh. you take a look at your, oh man. Okay, here it is. If you can't change your situation, change your attitude. And that's really important. Remember Jonah in, in the belly of the whale, right? Instead of, uh, uh, he's starting to pray. And that's really important. Whatever situation that you're in, okay, love conquers everything. There's nothing more phony than one who says they love you with conditions attached. It's a prenuptial love. It doesn't work. I will love you only if or when you do this. And it negotiates. That's not real love. God's love is unconditional and offered to everyone without any addendums or conditions attached. You just have to receive it in faith. He even says to love our enemies. Ooh, that's really tough. Has anybody hurt you that you really want to give the fivefold ministry to? Mm, one of, you know. The opposite of love again is <coughs> indifference. You don't give a rip anymore about that person. Love is the antidote to hatred and will change the course of your life. 1 Peter 4 8 says, Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sin. Anybody has a multitude of sin? Love. Love is a cure-all that heals a broken heart and gets rid of our sins. The key word in this scripture is continue. Deep love expects the best of everything, even when everything looks at its worst. You expect the best. It neutralizes your hurts, and it promotes healing and restores your joy. Anybody needs more joy today? Forgive. Move on. But it has to be real. Fake love doesn't produce anything but shallow, shallow fake lives. Again, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Number two. True love is honest. You've heard this, fake it before you make it. It doesn't work. You have to faith it before you make it. As Christians, integrity is a must. Your word has to be your bond. Your yeses have to be yeses and your noes be noes. No waha. No lip service. 
I'm going to be there, but you don't show up. I love you, but you, 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 what you're doing, you're hurting other people. In every venue of your life, whether it be your spouse, your children, your job, wherever it is, your word is your bond. I remember when I shared this before, when my dad and mom were building their house in Whitmore, okay? Old school, all they had to do with the contractor, my dad and the contractor's friend was shake hands. There was no contracts, okay? There's nothing, he says, okay buddy, I'll be there. He was early all the time, he did his best work and was late leaving. Why? Because his word was his integrity. Is your word your bond? Is your name good? Jesus said, my name is always good. You can use it. In any situation, as long as it's aligned with my word, use my name. And it will be done unto you. It applies to every part of our lives. Have you heard the saying, honesty is the best policy? Yes, it is. We must be persons of integrity in our daily dealings, wherever or whomever we're dealing with. Remember, we're Christians, not only on Sundays, we're Christians 24-7, 365. Because there's no timeshares in heaven. Amen? Mm -hmm. There's no part-timers in heaven. It's either full-time or you're not there. Either you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. Amen? God's word and principles are infallible. It means it's incapable of error. It means it's trustworthy. It, it is never, ever, ever wrong. In other words, God's word is true. It never fails. It will do exactly what it says it will do. When you choose life, a life of integrity, you'll find that you live in an ambience of joy and peace. Why? Because you know you haven't compromised God's word. You didn't lie at all. You were integrous of your word. Psalms 1, 19, 1 and 2 says, Joyful are the people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey His, his laws and search for Him with all of their hearts. Etch that into your heart today. No compromises. Your yeses are yeses, and your noes are noes. How many of you believe that we live in a counter-cultural world today, and it's spinning out of control? Take a look at, just take a look at recent, re recent uh, incidences. It just doesn't make sense. But God is still good. Chaos, tension has replaced peace. Fear and unrest has replaced your security. Doubt and fear replaces our hope and optimism. Divisiveness replaces unity. Many have turned their backs on God and suffered the consequences. This is still one nation under God. If you take a look at your currency, it's in God we trust in God. Billy Graham just died, one of the He's a super Christian as far as the world has ever, has ever seen. All Christians and all other religions respect Billy Graham because he stood for what's right. He built bridges. He didn't build walls. Right now is an opportune time to share the gospel with your friends and neighbors. Remember this. The answer is always no if you don't ask. 80% of people, if you ask them to come to church, are more than willing to come. If you ask. Why? Because the answer is always no if you don't ask. But what you say, what if they don't show up? My question is, what if they do? It's not about you, it's about them. Amen. Because you got something that they need and they want, something that's eternal. And you got the key. Many turn their backs on God. Why? It happens in our homes first. This is why Satan comes against families, comes against husbands and wives and children. Why? Because God has made family the foundation of his love. Right now, people have a new addiction. It's called the cell telephone. They're addicted to it. I sit down and you watch. Count how many people today, just sit in the shopping center or a restaurant. Count how many people you see doing this instead of doing this. Isn't it sad? Yeah, this is really convenient, but it shouldn't be an addiction. It is crazy when I see people doing it in a small screen. You know what? You know what we used to do 
How many of you remember riding bicycles? Going down the river, you know what I mean? Going beach, going catch fish, right? How many of you remember you having party lines? You could tell your neighbor. Good fun, yeah? Now everybody, even young kids are entertained. The art of conversation is lost for some reason. They don't know how to speak to each other anymore. It happens in a home. And it overflows into our schools. It overflows into the highways and byways of a nation. We need God to intervene. Amen? We need Him. Second Chronicles 7, 14 and 16. If, big word, if my people who are called by my, my name, Christians, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, not my hands, my face, my presence, and turn from the wicked ways or repent. I will hear. If you do this, God says, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will restore their land. If you humble yourself and pray, God will again hear, he will forgive and he will restore. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer, not some, every prayer made in this place. For I have chosen this place, this temple, this home, okay, this marriage, this family to be set apart, to be holy. A place where my name will be honored forever. I will always watch over it. Always watch over it. For it is dear to my heart. If there is no compromise in your home, if you are loving God and you are obeying His commands, He will hear you, He will forgive you, and He will restore you. Some of you know people that should be in church today but are doing other things more important than coming to church and hearing God's Word. Don't judge them. Pray for them. Pray that they will change their hearts because, you know what? Playing soccer, tennis, golf, going to the beach will never change you. The Word of God will change you. It's not being legalistic. It's just being honest. That's really important that you understand that. Why? Because true love helps. Number three. John 15, 30 says, There's no greater love, no greater love, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Again, one of the five love languages is acts of service. For these people, action speaks louder than words. Amen? Don't just tell me, show me. Taking initiative to help without being asked is, a, is very, very important and huge in their hearts. It demonstrates that you really care and appreciate their hard work. And you want them to be, just want to volunteer to help them. Small things done with a great heart is a huge difference in someone's heart. The Bible is filled with stories of people serving other people. Serving and helping is the very core why Jesus came voluntarily, he didn't have to, voluntarily to save and to serve us. He was all about serving the needs of those who needed help. He went out of his way to heal the woman Okay, with a blood, uh, with a deadly blood, blood disease, she was she was really carrying and suffering for twelve years. He went out to heal the blind and physical illnesses, even psychological and spiritual illnesses. Jesus Christ served, even served the least of these our brothers and sisters in poverty. And anyone who needed a touch from Jesus, he was there. All he has to do was ask. Compassion is the overflow of God's love. Why? Love does. True love is never stagnant, never passive. It's always dynamic and always active. True love is activates our heart, and we want to serve. Not that we, not that we have to. We want to, and we get to serve God and others. Okay, we want to make a difference in somebody's lives. It's just who we are. Okay? This is how God designed us in the first place, right? You'll discover, okay, when you help others, God will take care of you. When you put your eyes on somebody else, God sees, sees your heart more clearly. Luke 6.38 says, For if you give, you will get. Your gift will return to you in full and all and overflowing measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more and running over. Whatever measure you use, large or small, will be used to measure what is given back to you. If you give and are generous, generous, God will be generous back to you. Whatever it is. 
Start small, but start now. Okay? God cannot grow something if you don't plant anything. But there's one condition. You must serve willingly, not reluctantly, or under pressure. Willingly, not reluctantly. Not because somebody tried to pressure you to do something, pressure you to serve, pressure you to give. No. If you feel pressure, don't do it. Why? It doesn't honor God. It doesn't honor the person. Okay? It's just like you want to bless your wife. Oh, I've got to bless my wife. No, no, no. You have to. No, no, I don't want to. No. That's compromising. That's not complimenting. Okay? You must do that. God appreciates okay, when we do things and we give things cheerfully and voluntarily. The way you serve others' needs before yourself demonstrate the true trueness of what you have in your heart. Because from the abundance of your heart, you will live your life. And number four, this is really fun. True love is drama free. Any an amen? Okay, James, don't look at Shane. Okay. I, I saw the elbow. I saw the elbow. Yeah, sharp elbow. There's a saying, okay, how many of you go, went to celebrate recovery? I love this, okay? My wife always shared this with me because she's one of the leaders there. There's a saying in celebrate recovery. It says, don't let drama turn into trauma. Can you hear me? I heard that. It cracked me up. True, yeah? What great advice. One of the major reasons why there's breakups in what's good relationships is strife. Too much drama. How many of you have kids that gives you just too much drama? But dad, but mom, I need this, I need that, you never do this. How come you're always scolding me? You don't understand me. How many of, how many of your kids believe that mom and dad don't understand you? Come on. They go, oh, geez, mom, you don't understand. Come on, da, da, da. And they try to negotiate with you, right? And you look at them and go, yeah, right, been there, did that, right? Then when you get a little bit older, oh, mom and dad, you're pretty wise, you're pretty smart. Thank you, so yeah. There, this just yeah, they, they go through this. Uh, I call the spirit of SOS, stop and stupid. <laughs> you know, all of us do that, right? So what happens is that what great advice? Major reasons: strife, arguments, disagreements, gossip, criticizing, complaining. Just too much drama is like lion's bait. You try to have a lot of drama in, in your home. A lot of criticizing, complaining. It's like they throwing lion's bait in your home. Go, yee, kitty, 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 kitty. Come bite our family. Okay? It's like pulling the water for the sharks to come and to eat you. Isn't that crazy? This is why God wanted to get rid of the, of the, of the Israelites when they're walking through the deserts. He provided everything, but they weren't satisfied. And they grumble, grumble, complain, and criticize, and compare, da, da, da. How many are just sick and tired of hearing that? 